While the headlines in Formula One are dominated by the fact that Max Verstappen has gone six race weekends without a victory, McLaren has been busy showcasing their lack of racecraft, a team clearly struggling with the pressures of a title chase they haven't experienced since the days of Lewis Hamilton driving for them. Max Verstappen's P6 finish in Monza was far from what we've come to expect from the reigning champion. After the race, Verstappen complained about being unable to deploy full engine power. However, his boss, Christian and Horner hinted that the issues may trace back even further, suggesting that the problems first surfaced as early as last year's United States Grand Prix. Red Bull seems to have hit a breaking point. Experiencing their worst run since 2019, team boss Christian Horner admitted that they can no longer trust their tools, a problem that didn't just emerge overnight. Horner revealed that since late 2023, the team has been grappling with unreliable data, which has consistently failed to predict balance and mechanical issues ahead of each F1 weekend. This ongoing struggle has left Red Bull scrambling to regain their footing. To the outside world, the early stages of the 2024 F1 season seemed like business as usual, with Max Verstappen dominating by winning seven of the first 10 Grand Prix. However, since his last victory in Barcelona back in June, the narrative has shifted dramatically. Despite a series of upgrades introduced by Red Bull, none of them have yielded the expected results, leaving the team struggling to find the form that once seemed unstoppable. As the F1 one season reaches its critical juncture, teams typically shift their focus to the car designs for the upcoming year. However, Red Bull finds itself in an unusual predicament, scrambling to protect their current advantage in both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championships, rather than looking ahead. Max Verstappen's sixth-place finish at Monza, coupled with Sergio Perez's eighth, has significantly tightened the gap between Red Bull and McLaren, reducing what was once a comfortable 99-point lead after the fifth round in China to a mere eight points. If the trend continues, McLaren seems poised to snatch the lead from Red Bull in the very next race. Despite this surge, McLaren faces its own set of challenges. The last time they were serious contenders for an F1 title was back in 2010, with Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button behind the wheel. Since then, their long hiatus from the top has left them a bit battle-weary, and the cracks are beginning to show, especially since the race in Hungary just before the summer break. Team principal Andrea Stella, a key figure during the genre Tot era at Ferrari was instrumental in the dominant run that saw the team secure six constructors and five drivers' championships between 1999 and 2004, the golden years of Michael Schumacher. Back then, Schumacher was the undisputed lead driver, with Ferrari relentlessly channeling all their resources to equip him with everything he needed to clinch those titles. The culture at McLaren is undeniably shaped from the top, and in this case, that influence comes from Zach Brown, a relatively recent arrival to Formula One. Brown has been adamant about maintaining equality between his drivers, a nonsense stance that has cost Lando Norris 10 crucial points over the last three races, points that could have easily been secured if the team had issued orders for Oscar Piastri to step aside. Today, Brown asserted that McLaren places equal importance on winning both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championships. However, his words seem disingenuous. The points lost by Norris, who remains their only realistic contender to challenge Verstappen, would not have impacted McLaren standing in the constructors' race in the slightest had they directed Piastri to yield to Norris. Brown's decision-making, in this case, feels more like a double-edged sword than a balanced approach. In a conversation with Sky, Zach Brown emphasised the importance of keeping Oscar Piastri motivated, highlighting how his victory over Norris in Hungary served as a crucial confidence boost for the less seasoned McLaren driver. However, with Norris now in his sixth season with the team, many argue that he has earned the right to be treated as McLaren's primary contender for the Drivers' Championship, deserving of the special treatment that often accompanies such a role. At Monza, McLaren squandered what could have been a near-certain 1-2 finish, largely due to poor planning and a slow reaction during the race. The situation became more complicated when Piastri aggressively overtook Norris in Turn 4 on the first lap, setting the stage for an intense and unnecessary intra-team battle. This mismanagement not only cost them valuable points, but also highlighted the potential pitfalls of Brown's insistence on equal treatment for both drivers. To make matters worse, Oscar Piastri's move didn't just create tension within the team, it also opened the door for Charles Leclerc to slip past Norris into P2. Whatever praise McLaren might have garnered for letting their drivers race freely quickly dissolved into empty rhetoric, as neither of them managed to claim the top step of the podium. Lewis Hamilton didn't hold back in his criticism of McLaren's strategy. Given that the seven-time world champion has repeatedly shown he knows exactly what's needed to secure F1 
won titles, perhaps it's time Zach Brown seriously considers that McLaren's lack of battle-hardened experience is holding them back. The team needs to mature quickly if they want to stay in the fight. Hamilton observed, If you look at the race trace, McLaren definitely had the pace, but they simply overcooked it. They were pushing too hard, too early, and those fast laps in the beginning just destroyed their tyres. I suppose they had a two-stop strategy in mind. He added, If they had just eased off a bit and stretched out their stints, they could have made a one-stop strategy work. But from what I was seeing, with the lap times they were clocking, there was no way those tyres were going to last at that pace. Naturally, when a team allows its drivers to race each other, there's always a risk that the race strategies might not be optimal for the overall team result. If McLaren had maintained their 1-2 positions from the start, they could have managed the pace more effectively, preventing their drivers from pushing too hard and wearing out their tyres in the heat of intra-team competition. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc played his cards wisely. Even though he briefly lost P2 to Norris after the first round of pit stops, Leclerc avoided a second trip to the pit lane, saving the 25 seconds that would have cost him crucial track position. By managing his tyres better, he finished strong while McLaren's strategy unravelled. Both McLaren drivers were questioned about the feasibility of a one-stop strategy, and for Norris, who was stuck in dirty air, the answer was clearly a no. However, Piastri admitted after the race that, while his tyres experienced graining similar to Leclerc's, he didn't stay out long enough for the graining to clear up as it did for the Monegasque's Ferrari. McLaren's idealistic approach of treating both drivers as equals and allowing them to race freely needs to be reconsidered. While they might be front runners for the Constructors' Championship, the reality is that Norris is their only real hope for clinching their first driver's title since 2008. It's time for McLaren to prioritise their strategy if they want to turn that hope into a reality. Norris didn't hold back in his criticism, calling Piastri's driving a bit reckless, and noting that if he had braked just one metre later, the two of them would have collided, a scenario Zach Brown surely wants to avoid. With only eight race weekends left, McLaren must make a decisive move. Designate Norris as their number one driver for the remainder of the season. How Oscar Piastri feels about it should be seen as part of the tough learning curve he needs to navigate. Lando has already lost 10 crucial points in his title pursuit, while McLaren's strategic decisions in Hungary and Monza have done nothing to change the team's overall standing. If McLaren continues down this path in the upcoming races, Norris could easily lose another 25 points before the final showdown in Abu Dhabi. Red Bull and Max Verstappen are facing pressure like never before, and it's high time for Zach Brown and his team to develop a killer instinct. If that means bruising Piastri's ego for a few weeks, so be it. True champions make the hard choices for the greater good. Is Zach Brown's insistence on driver equality at McLaren hurting the team's chances in both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championships? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, goodbye for now.